Good morning and thank you for tuning in. Wherever you may be, we invite you to join us, worship along with us as we sing these songs of praise to Jesus Christ this morning. strength is renewed in your presence as we wait on you. Our joy is restored in your presence as we worship you. Our faith cannot be shaken. Yes, Lord, we know that we have victory in your name. We're so grateful that you made a way for us. And so as we sing these songs, we sing with all of our hearts. We lift our hearts up to you. You 
are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are we make a miracle work promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are we make a miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here touching every heart i worship you i worship you you are here healing every heart I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turn the lives around, I worship you Lord, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart.
God, this morning, although we may be in different spaces, although we may not be congregated together as we're used to, Lord, we, be, we come before you as one church. We come before you as your church. Father, we pray, we seek your face in the midst of what the world considers a pandemic. Lord, we see it as an opportunity to experience your miraculous work. Father, we pray for your peace over all who are sick, over those who may be living in fear, those who are burdened with financial struggles right now. God, together as one church, we pray for our state. We pray for our nation. We pray for our world. God, you've never failed us. We know you won't start now. And so we pray, expectant. We pray waiting for you to deliver us through the hardships in this world. God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your promises to us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we pray all of these things in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Aloha everybody and welcome to New Hope Windward Online. My name is Brandon, I'm one of the worship leaders here and I want to thank you for joining us online today. In a few minutes, we have an encouraging message that we'll hear from Pastor TJ. Well, in a few moments, we're going to transition into a time of worshiping God through our giving. Right now, Hawaii is facing its highest unemployment rate ever, one of the highest in the nation at 35%. And as a result, many families are struggling to put food on the table, and food distributors all over the island have seen a massive increase of people waiting in line for hours just to pick up food. So in response to the overwhelming need for food, New Hope Windward will be launching our very own drive through food pantry. We wanna help those of you in our church and our community who are in need. So, starting next Saturday, May 23rd, and every Saturday, we'll have a drive through food pantry open from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the upper level Sears parking lot at Windward Mall. If you need food or know of a family who needs food, come by and we'll give you a bag of food that you can use for yourself or for the family that you take it to. Many of us are still employed, and if that's you, we encourage you to come by and drop off any non-perishable food items, such as bags of rice, canned goods, cereals, Simon packets, so that we can distribute them to those in need. You can pick up or drop off food on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the Windward Mall Sears Upper Parking Lot. Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And we want to thank you for your generosity as you are helping feed thousands of families in our church and in our community. In fact, when you give here at New Hope Windward, you don't give to us, you give through us as a portion of what you give goes toward now 18 ministries who serve the needs of thousands of families both locally and globally. So thank you for your hearts to stay committed in your giving and trusting God as our faithful provider. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the Give tab on our website, you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Another way to give is by texting the word DONATION to the number on your screen and follow the instructions, or if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. Would you, wherever you are, join me as I pray for our offering today? Lord, we know that in this uncertain season, you are continuously working, that you continue to make a way and provide beyond our every need. God, thank you for your hand of provision over us as a church, that we can be a people who can continue to bless those who are in need. God, thank you for those who sow into your kingdom through our church here on earth. And I pray that what is given today would be used in furthering the kingdom for your glory. We honor you in all that we do, and it's in your name we pray, amen. Well, if you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you to our New Hope online community. We'd love to keep you updated with all that's happening here at New Hope Windward. So simply text Starbucks to 484848 and we will email you a Starbucks e-gift card as our way of saying welcome to our New Hope Ohana. Well, right now, I just have a few quick announcements to share with you. 
As we all know, graduation season is here, and while none of us had any idea that it would turn out this way for our graduates, we'd love to honor and celebrate them. So email us a non-professional picture of your graduating senior to info at nhww.org by Sunday, May 24th. Be sure to include their full name and the school they're graduating from, and we will honor them as a part of our Sunday service on May 31st. Well, during these times of sheltering and social distancing, we haven't met physically as a church for over a month and a half. At New Hope Windward, we care deeply about how you and your family are doing during these times. And so we've put together a Care Callers ministry that reaches out to those in our church by giving them a call to offer encouragement or prayer. Some of you have asked, how can you volunteer or help during these times? So if you're interested in joining our team, please send your name and contact information to info at nhww.org and someone from our Care Call team will contact you with more details. Nothing could have fully prepared us for the repercussions of COVID-19. We've all had to get used to the different rhythms of life, creating a new way of living for us and our families. And you may be wondering, what will life be like now? Well, in a few weeks, we have a brand new message series called Getting Back to New Normal. Now, through God's word, we'll learn how to navigate our lives back to the new normal that lies ahead. And we'd love to have you join us for that. Well, that's it for all of our announcements today. Before we get into our message, we want to encourage you to invite someone to watch today's message. Simply text or forward the link to them as we continue in our series, When God Doesn't Make Sense. Well, we have a special message today, so from wherever you're joining us, would you please help me in welcoming Pastor T.J. Gorham. Well, welcome to all of you joining us online from all over the world, especially to those of you who are joining us for the very first time. Welcome to church. Uh, my name is TJ, and I have the privilege of coming to uh, the windward side of Oahu every so often to be part of this community here. Now, if you're not from Hawaii, let me just kind of give you a little snapshot of uh, the windward side. There's another word for it. It's called God's side of the island. And it's true because it's absolutely beautiful, both in terms of just the scenery as well as the people here. And part of the reason why I love getting to come and be part of this church is because of what this church is actually doing. Now, if you're not from Hawaii, let me just kind of catch up a little bit. Uh, in the last two months, our islands have been hit kind of hard economically. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the newspaper headlines, uh, it says this, that even about 37% of our island filed for unemployment. What does that mean? Well, basically, one out of three people here in Hawaii lost their job. Now, what I love about this church is this church isn't just a church that's praying for people or just trying to comfort people. And all those things are really, really good. This church is a church that springs into action, saying, you know what, what can we do to take care of the people on our island? So this is what's cool. I just heard about this. Starting this week on Saturday, what they're doing is they're starting this drive-through food pantry. So it's going to be at Windward Mall. Uh, it's going to be up the Sears upper parking lot from 9 to 12. And here's how it works. If you live here locally on island and you have some extra non-perishable goods, you can actually take them or go to the store and buy some and you can show up at the mall and you drop them off. Because the other side of the equation, if you're in a spot where you need help or you're in need, you can come down and we just want to bless you. We just want to help out in any way that we can. And no shame in this season because we're really all in this together. Now, I will say this. Uh, for some of you guys that might find yourself in a hard space, uh, it can feel weird to kind of come and get a little bit of help. I know that was true for me. Uh, you may know some of my story, but my wife and I last year, we were, our son was in the NICU in the hospital for almost three months. And during that time, we were just getting hammered financially. And if I can be honest with you, I, if other people didn't come alongside and help, I, I don't know if we would have made it. Now, as a young father and a young husband, it wasn't the easiest thing for me to allow other people to help. Because there's this sense where like, you know, like I should be able to do it on my own and be good to go, but it was just a rough season for us. And I had to come to a place where it was like, people were always willing, but I had to be able to say, you know what? Okay, I, I totally can receive help. Because here's what I realized. There's going to come a day where it's going to be turned and I get to be the one that has help as well. And it's going to be my joy. And what it looks like to do family, to do community, and really to do church, is to start to live in these kind of realities. Matter of fact, if you look at the early church, the church of Acts, this is what they were like. They didn't count what they had as only their own. They just looked for ways to help one another. 
So that's what this church is doing and that's what this is about and I love it. Now, if you know somebody that does need help and they do feel a little shame to come down, here's what you can do. Just come down, grab some stuff for them. Don't have to say nothing. You're not gonna ask any questions because we just wanna help and bless each other. But that's what kind of community we're a part of and that's why I love getting to come to be part of New Hope Windward. Now today, as we're kind of jump back into this series a little bit, we're in this series called When God Doesn't Make Sense. And I'm going to do a little bit of a different message in this, something that kind of like swelled up inside of me. And we're going to look at uh, an analogy that you see for our life all through scripture. Now, one of the things that scripture says about mine and your life as it says that we run through seasons. And one of the ways it paints a picture is it says sometimes it's almost like we're running a race. Now, for some of you, I know that's good news because you love to run. Unfortunately for me, I can't stand it. Matter of fact, I just like, I can think of almost anything else I'd rather do than run. I'd rather wash dishes than go run. I just, I cannot stand it. I mean, I can do like the short kind run, you know, where it's like the the playground showdown, like race you to the monkey bars. But like the long runs, I just like, it's like torture. As a matter of fact, I ran a marathon one time in my life. And it's something that if I have my way, I will never do it again. It was just so, so hard and so enjoyable. But When I read through scripture, what it's painting the picture of sometimes is that there's going to be seasons of life that happen like that to you and also to me. Matter of fact, for some of you watching right now, you might be in a season exactly like that. And how many of you guys know it's one thing to run a hundred meter dash. It's a completely different thing to go and run a full marathon. Let me give you some examples. Uh, Maybe for you, you're single and you really wanna get married. It's one thing to be single for two or three months. But when you're single for two to three years, I mean, part of you just feels like, man, I don't know what's going on here. How long is this gonna last? Or is this ever even gonna change for me? Or, you know, maybe it's one thing to get sick for two or three days. Matter of fact, in my house, my wife will make jokes with me about this, but when I'm sick, it's like if I get like a little cold, it literally for me feels like I'm dying. And I make this big old thing. Oh, and I think a lot of guys are like this. Like, oh, I'm so sick. And my wife's like, come on. But it's one thing to be sick for five or six days. But it's a different thing when you're facing a diagnosis that's going to last years. And somewhere along that journey or race, I mean, it's really easy to start lose heart. And like, I just don't know how much longer I can do this. Or maybe it's your marriage. You know, we all run through awkward seasons where it's like, oh, maybe like one or two hard weeks in our marriage. But what happens when you're facing a slump that lasts one or two years? And at some point, you just start to ask yourself, like, I don't really know how much longer I can keep going. Or for those of us watching here that are Christians, you know, for us, sometimes that can happen in faith. Maybe you got to a place where it's like, I have chose to follow God, and I thought that God would just start to work everything out and make it easy, but it If I'm honest with you, it's been hard and it's been hard for a while. And there's part of me that like, I know I'm supposed to keep going, but I'm just starting to lose heart. Now, the good news is, is if you found yourself in any one of these situations, scripture speaks directly to us. Matter of fact, if you open the word of God, what you're going to see is it talks about not only how do you navigate seasons like this, But how do you thrive when you're in these hard seasons? And so we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12. That's where we're going to be today. So you can open up your Bibles with me. Uh, I'm going to read it. It'll come up on the screen if you don't have a Bible with you, which is totally fine. But this is what it says. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted, or some translations will say, or lose heart. See, this is the thing. This is the promise. The Bible talks about a way that we can exist that we won't grow weary or lose heart or become faint-hearted. That's the promise God has for you and he has for me today. 
And what we're going to do today is journey and figure out what does this scripture say so that that promise can be realized inside of our life. But before we kind of dissect this, I wanted to just pray for us, uh, just because I really feel like God wants to do something special here uh, today. So if you can't bow your heads to me, I just want to pray. Father, I just want to come before you, God, and I just, I just ask that you just get me out of the way right now. God, there's people that are watching this that are in incredibly difficult seasons. And what they need is not any of my words, but they need a word from you. So Lord, as we would begin to open up your scripture, would you make it come to life? Would you make it speak to our hearts? And would we understand what it is that you have for us today, God? Because we know that you want us to be able to not only navigate these hard seasons, but actually thrive in the middle of them. So we love you, we praise you, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go back to the starting point because it's going to lead us to that promise. Now, what you got to know about Hebrews is Hebrews is a letter, and it's a letter written to a bunch of house churches. And the reason it was like this is these house churches were going through a really, really hard time. And the author wanted to encourage them to continue to do well, even though it was a hard season. And I kind of like it because they would gather in homes and kind of just read this thing all together. And it's exactly what we're doing right now. Some of you guys are watching this in your living room, some in your bedroom, but we're gathering these spaces and we're allowing God's word to speak life into us. But this is what I say, started out with that word, therefore. Now, as you see this, that word's really important because whenever you see this in the Bible, it means look back to whatever came right before this. And so if you were to read Hebrews chapter 11, it's this really famous chapter called the Faith Hall of Fame. And what the author does is he goes through and he talks about all these incredible people. He talks about this guy named Joseph. And Joseph was a guy who not only saved all of Israel, but he saved the nation of Egypt too. And he'll talk about guys like Abraham, who they say is like the father of faith, the strongest faith. And he goes through all these heroes, boom, 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 one after another. And after he describes all these different guys, then he comes to this scripture and he says, therefore, in light of all these guys' stories, here's what we need to do. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, it's going to say, let us learn how to run. Now, when you look at this cloud of witnesses, the question is like, well, who is that? That's why it's important to look at this there for. You know who these cloud of witnesses are? It's all those faith heroes. The picture is almost like a stadium. You're in a stadium and in the stands is Joseph and Moses and Abraham and they're watching as you run your race and they've already ran their legs, but now it's your turn. You know, when my wife and I got married, uh, we went on our honeymoon into Spain and when we were in Spain, uh, I saw something that helped me understand the scripture in a completely different way. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, this is a, a picture of one of these castles. The, they have them all over Spain. This in particular one is one of the ones that actually inspired Walt Disney himself. Now, what's crazy is when you go into this castle and in a moment, a video is going to come up on the screen and kind of show you because I shot this myself. But as you can see in this video, there's the thrones right there. And as it goes and pans around the room, you can see on the ceiling, there's all these different pictures of these kings. And they're all the kings that were the kings that went before the king on the throne now. And underneath each of the kings is a description of what that king had done before. And man, as I sat there and I looked at that, I was like, oh my gosh, God brought this scripture to mind. And it was like, that's what this scripture's painting. See, for that king, what it meant is that king was supposed to sit on the throne and look around at his ancestors and see not only the bloodline he came from, but all the great things that they did. And here's the key. Here's the reason why. So that he would remember where he came from and who he was. Because the same greatness that lived in them was the same greatness that was in him and it was meant to inspire him to rise up to who he was supposed to be. And the same way today, what God wants to do to you is you say, you know what? You see all these heroes in the Bible? A lot of you guys, you think of them as incredible. And when you look at yourself, you think that you're not good enough, that you don't measure up. But what he's trying to say is, listen, you're forgetting who you are. You're cut from the same cloth. The same Holy Spirit that was in them is the same Holy Spirit that lives in you. 
Matter of fact, for somebody watching this right now, I really feel like for you, you need to hear this, is that you might feel exhausted like you have nothing less to give. But what God wants to say to you this morning is this, is that you have what it takes, not because you're strong enough, but because he's strong in you. Listen, if you're watching this and you're not a Christian, one of the reasons that a lot of us are in faith isn't because we grew up Christian or anything else. It's because we've actually encountered the truth that when you follow God, he gives you the strength that just surpasses you or he gives you peace that's beyond your circumstances. It's just incredible. And the author's pointing to this saying, hey, listen, that's the case. And so since you're surrounded by all these guys, since you're cut from the same cloth, here's your next step. You need to now lay aside every weight and sin, which clings so closely. And then you're able to run with endurance the race that's set before you. You know, for me, I, I told you I hate running. I hate endurance races. But one endurance thing I do like is trekking or these really long hikes. I do like these 20, 30 mile hikes because you climb all these mountains and see these sites. And I've actually got to do this all over the world. Uh, one of my favorite ones I've ever done was in the Himalayas. Uh, I'll show you a picture. Uh, this was on a 20,000 foot mountain we were trying to climb. And so this is actually me right here. And it's crazy. You have to like clip into the other guys to make sure that nobody falls into these cracks in the glaciers. And you walk. To do this mountain, it took us three days. Non-stop walking, non-stop walking. Now, when you're on these long endurance treks or these hard seasons, I'll tell you one thing that you don't do. You don't carry anything extra with you. You don't carry like a whole bunch of extra snacks. You know, I got my like uh, Lee Hing uh, gummy bears and all that stuff. No, it's like anything extra, I got to get rid of these things because here it is. And this is my point when it comes to it. Every ounce counts when you're on the mountain. Every ounce counts because every ounce you take with you, it just makes the journey that much harder. See what the scripture is saying to us today is that when we're in these seasons of life, every ounce counts. There might be some things in your life that you need to actually get rid of. Might be some things that you need to remove or to leave behind because honestly, they're weighing you down. Now, you don't have to be a church person to see this as true. A lot of us will entertain different habits or different relationships or different things that if we're really honest, they're not actually helping us, but they're actually hindering us. As a matter of fact, that's the question I want to just kind of pause and ask you here is this. Are there any unhealthy habits, relationships, or worries that you need to let go of today? You know, God might be prompting you even now in your heart on some of these things. And here's the great thing about it. Whenever God prompts our hearts, he's not only telling us what we need to let go of, but he's also going to give us the strength and power to do it. Because for some of us, we might feel like, listen, there's no way that I could like kick this habit or I could separate from this relationship thing that I know I'm supposed to or I, that I would let go of this worry. But with God, all things are possible. And so we come to him. He not only tells us what to do, but empowers us to be able to do it. Now, for me, when I'm on these 20,000 foot mountains, there always comes a point where it's like, I'm just like done. Like day three, we got up at midnight, walked all night. And at like eight, nine in the morning, nine hours of walking straight, I was just spent. And I was just trying to do one thing. I thought, man, if I could only get a glimpse of the peak, I'll be set. You know, if I could just see the end. And sure enough, I see the end of it. And man, that let me push on when I thought I was totally done. I like, my eyes were fixed on it. And when I got to the end of it, it actually is worth it. I brought up the picture when we got to the shoulder right where we ended. Uh, it'll come up also over the screen kind of covered so you can see more detail. But it's like, you see this and I look elated in this picture. The truth is it took me 10 minutes just to be able to stand up because I was just toast. But as long as I could see the end, it helped me to be able to keep going even though it was a long, hard season and I felt like I was spent. Now, when you come to scripture, it's going to tell us to do the same thing, except it's going to say, don't fix your eyes on a peak. It's going to tell us to focus on something else. Let's take a look at what it says. It says, look to Jesus, or some translations say, fix your eyes on Jesus, the founder, the author, and perfecter of our faith. See, 
Whenever you run into a hard space, one of the best things that you can do is to sit down and really think about Jesus and what he did. Because what the author does is goes on and he starts to describe it. He says, Jesus, for the joy that was set before him, he was able to endure the cross. Now, what you got to understand about the cross is the cross was the most gruesome and most difficult thing a human being's ever gone through. And when I look at my own circumstances and the hardships I face, To be honest with you, they feel really, really hard and they are for me. But if I was to compare them to the cross, it's not even a comparison. The cross is so much more difficult and Jesus was able to endure it and be able to press through it. And the same strength that was in him, the same power is actually the same power that lives in you and me once we put our faith in Jesus. And so he was able to do it even though it was a shameful thing. And now he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, if you're just watching this and just kind of tuning in for the first time, sometimes people think that following Jesus is like a whole set of rules. Or sometimes people think that it's about living your perfect life or your best life. But the truth of it is, is our faith is really not based that much on what we do and 100% based on what Jesus has already done for us. So he says that he conquered the cross. He's seated at the right hand of God. He already conquered death on our behalf. And in light of that, when we think about those things, it's like, okay, if he can do that, then we're going to be able to continue to press through on whatever it is that God has us facing in this season. Matter of fact, the scripture ends with that promise by saying this, is considered him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted or lose heart. See, here's the thing. People around Jesus, some people loved him. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people were trying to do everything they could to stop him. They said lies about him. They came against him. Some of you knows what that feels like. And what's crazy is Jesus didn't retaliate against them. He actually was able to love them, even though they were so hostile towards him. And to take it one step further, it wasn't just enemies that were against Jesus. Some of Jesus' best friends actually betrayed him. And what Jesus did is not retaliate against these best friends, but actually forgave them and restored them. And the reason why I think this is important is maybe for you, you're experiencing a lot of relational difficulty. That's what makes this a really hard season. And it's not from people on the outside. It's actually from some of the people that are closest to you. Maybe it's people in your home. Maybe it's people in your extended family. And for you, it just feels so difficult to be able to do that. Listen, Jesus knows what that feels like. He went through that. And because he went through that, it's like he understands that. And when we think about it, okay, God, Jesus, you understand what this feels like. And I'm going to think about how you handled this. And then would you give me the strength to do the same thing in the same way? Listen, in the scriptures, this is what it's saying. If we can come now, realize who we're surrounded by and recognize that we're running a race and we're going to shed off all the extra weight, we're going to fix our eyes on Jesus, considering how he ran his race and how he treated everybody around him. If we do those things, here's what happens. We will not grow weary and we will not get faint hearted. Listen, the heart of this entire message is meant to be a thing of hope for you because there is a supernatural blessing waiting for you. And when you experience it in your life, it's one of the biggest ways you'll know that God is real. Listen, for those of you guys that are watching that haven't put your faith in Jesus and maybe you're not even sure why you're watching this right now, I don't think it's an accident. I think that this for you, this is a chance that you might be able to encounter Jesus for the first time because all of us go through hard seasons. And maybe in the middle of this hard season, it might be a time that you say, you know what, God, if you're real, I don't feel like I have the strength to do this on my own. Would you give me the strength to carry on? I mean, honestly, what do you got to lose? What's the worst thing that's going to happen by just trying that? Now, what I want to do is I want to do one more thing and kind of created this creative video parable, if you will. Because for me, like I said, I like hiking, I like trekking. And I actually think that hiking and trekking is the perfect picture for what these hard seasons are like and what the scripture is. And so I have my friend, Ben, he's going to come on the screen in a moment. You'll see him and then you'll see me as well. We filmed this a little bit back. 
And we filmed this special illustration in the Ko'olaus, which are our mountains here in Oahu. And uh, I really think that this will make a lot of sense to you. So check this out. In the beginning of any of these long seasons, you start out really full of expectation. You go into the woods and your soul comes alive. The way the sun moves through the trees or the wind blows through the leaves. It's just a peace and a stillness. Something that you don't experience anywhere else. And you go to focus on your breath and it's really all you can do in this moment. Just breathe in and breathe out and just keep going. One foot after the other. After you get through just a maybe 30, 40 minutes of it, you hit a couple of these steep inclines and everybody has this kind of like reality check where you start to feel the weight on your back or you start to, you know, feel it on your feet are a little uncomfortable. And if it's a really long one, like 28 miles, part of you starts to just think, what on earth have I got myself into? It's not all that different than what happens in our life. I mean, for some of us, faith was like this. We picture following Jesus. Hey, this is going to be great. Jesus is going to take care of everything. But then we hit our first trial. Or he asks us to do something difficult. And at our thing, it's like, wow, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. It's just reality setting in. Or sometimes in marriage, it looks like this, you know? You get married thinking hey, we're all going to be on the same page and we just fit so well together only to find out that you're actually not the same person. And it settles in of like, wow, this is a little more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. And so you get to this place where it's kind of like a gut check, a reality check. But the good news is in the long journeys, it doesn't last. After that, on these treks, what ends up happening is you start thinking less of how long it's gonna be and more about just settling in to the pace that's gonna work for you. You find your breath, you figure out kind of just the rhythms, how often to take breaks, how often to move forward. And part of you starts to feel like, you know what, I can do this. But again, if you're moving again from just a short hike to a long hike, it's inevitable that at some point, it's gonna go from I can do this to this feels like a grind. I mean, it just feels kind of just brutal and I still got a long ways to go. In life, I mean, I can think of raising kids feels like this. You know, we're forming character inside of them. It's a day after day journey. I can think of trusting God feels like this. It's each day you want to do it so much, but you find yourself trusting in yourself and it's just like two steps forward, one step back. And it feels like you just have so far to go. Now, if it's a really long season, you'll go from this whole thing of kind of a grind to this point where you just feel like you're over it. Like I'm just done. Every step you feel the weight on your shoulders get heavier and heavier. And you just don't want to go on. You find yourself eyes just scanning the horizon and you're just searching for the end. And finally you get a glimpse of it, this peak in the distance. And just a little part of you hopes, like I can do this. If that's the end, I can do this. And so you push, you know, you, you gird yourself up, you pull your bag tight and you really just hunker down and head towards it. You summon everything you got in your person just to push to this end. It's just a little bit further, and then I can rest. It's just a little bit further, and I'll be done. So as you approach the end, it, it, you know the ground intensifies. It seems to get steeper, but part of you just feels even more determined. Like if I can just push, it'll all be different. And so you scramble off your hands and knees. You're scrambling up pieces of it, and you're pushing harder than you've ever pushed just a little bit more. And so finally, you know, out of breath, just panting, it's like you finally see it's only 10 more steps, only a few more. You put one foot there and you come over the crest of the edge and you just see and the little bit of your heart just comes alive. I mean, you just feel like hope, like I did it. I didn't think I was gonna make it, but I did it. And this just feeling of joy and relief washes over you. The only problem is, is as you look in the distance, you come to realize that this isn't the peak. It's actually a false peak. 
there's even greater peaks coming after this. You've put your hope in everything you had into something that isn't actually what it seemed to be. You know, it's at this point in the journey where you're in the most dangerous spot of any trek. It's where you put your hope on a finish line that actually isn't the finish line. And when that happens in our life, I mean, that's where you don't even just experience hopelessness. You actually experience despair. I mean, it almost breaks your soul if that's ever happened to you. And you get into this place, it's like, I just, I don't know how much more longer I can go. I'm done. I mean, people will just sit down and collapse in those moments. And that's actually the times in life where most of us quit. That's the time when you throw the towel in with your marriage. That's the time people walk away from faith. And it's not because they didn't have it in them. It's because they put their hope in something they were never supposed to put their hope in from the beginning. See, our hope can never be on where the finish line is. Our hope can only be on who's walking with us on this journey. We've got to begin to focus not on how far can we make it, but how are we running the race that's set before us? And who are we fixing our eyes on? Because it's that hope that's never going to fail. Yeah, so the question we want to ask you is this. What are you putting your trust in? Or who are you putting your trust in? Because the truth is, is that all of us put our trust in something. See, some of us, we think to ourselves like, man, if I could just get to retirement, or if I could just amass this amount of money, I'll be set. But the truth is, is as we've seen kind of brutally in the last couple months, is that if you put your trust in riches, riches can fail. Some of us think that, man, if I could just, you know, get into this relationship or if I could just, you know, get married, then this would change inside of my life, whatever it is that I'm facing. But the truth is, is that when you get to that, you think that it's going to change things, but it actually ends up acting as a false peak. And whatever you thought was going to change and transform you doesn't quite deliver in the way that you thought it would. And here's the thing. It was never meant to. See, if we're constantly focusing on where the finish line is, we're almost setting ourselves up for defeat because the real secret to endurance or to being able to thrive in these seasons is not to focus on where the finish line is, but to focus on who is it that's running the race with us. Because if your eyes are fixed on Jesus and the strength that he gives us, here's the thing, Jesus never fails. So when you look at your own life, and the question I want to ask again in a different way is, are you putting your trust in any false peaks? Are you thinking to yourself, man, if I, once this happens, I'm set. Once I get this job, I'm set. Once I get the house, I'm set. Because here's what I want to tell you, my friends, if you're doing that, we're actually fixing our hope, not on anything bad, they're good things, but it's on something else other than Jesus. And at the end of the day, those things can always fail. We're setting ourselves up for actually disappointment. And when that settles into our person, it can be absolutely heartbreaking. You know, a lot of us were in this quarantine thing and it feels like a hard season. I remember in the beginning, it's like, okay, this is new. It's still hard, but one or two weeks, okay. But now we're like seven weeks in and it's a lot harder. A lot of us are done. And many of us are thinking, man, if we could just get out of this quarantine, or if we could just get back to when things are normal. But the question I want to kind of throw out there, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, but just, just ponder it for a second. What happens is if the season after this quarantine is actually harder than the quarantine itself? Like what happens if the economic impact in our island actually causes a little bit more difficulty than it was just to shelter at home in place? Again, I'm not trying to say that's what's going to happen, but what I am trying to say is if our hope is, okay, if I could just get out of quarantine, it might be a false peak. Rather than looking at the situation and saying, okay, this season is hard, but Jesus, I'm fixed my eyes on you and you're with me in the middle of it. So in the middle of this, would you give me the peace that I need because I feel crazy? In the middle of this, would you give me the strength to continue loving my kids and just teaching my kids because every day I just feel like I'm at the end. 
You know, in the middle of this, would you just give me hope? Because it feels like my relationships are suffering. When we do that, that's what's happening, fixing our eyes on Jesus. So again, I just want to say this one last time. Don't focus on where the finish line is. Focus is on who is running with you. Because here's the thing about Jesus. He never fails. Now, if you are watching this and you're not a Christian, you might think, well, you know what? Honestly, I don't even know what I think about Jesus or God. And that's great. I I totally understand that. But what you do understand is putting your trust in something that does fail. And here's the thing you're going to find out about God. If you're willing to give him a chance and to open up your heart and to say, hey, you know what? God, if you're real, I want to just be able to encounter you in some way. If you're real, would you give me peace? Like I said earlier, would you give me strength? Then what you're going to find, my friend, is that Jesus will come and meet you right where you're at. You don't got to be perfect. You just got to be open. And here's the thing. It doesn't mean he's going to fix everything in your life. Listen, all of us that are Christians will tell you that. But what it does say is that he will walk with you every season. And for those of us here that are Christians, you know that. You remember that. So let's today focus our eyes on where it should be, fixed on Jesus, the one who ran the race before us. And let's continue to gird ourselves up, not by our own strength, but by relying on his strength, so that we might see the day when we finish this season well, we cross over the finish line, not because we're focused on the finish line, but because we're focused on the one running with us. And he will always see us through every season. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Let's pray. So Father, right now, God, I just want to lift up all the different people, no matter what situation they're facing. Uh, Lord, I believe that you may have spoken to some of them specific things during this message. God, give them the ability to take action. Help some of them to be able to lay aside the habits or the relationships or the worries. Help other ones to take their first step ever towards you. Matter of fact, if you're watching this and you say, you know, I want to make a decision to follow after Jesus, all you got to do is just be able to pray and say, God, I want to follow you. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. In fact, if you want to do that, I can lead you in that prayer even right now. I'll give you the words. Um, But you put the heart, because it's not magic words, it's about the heart. So if you can, just repeat after me and say this. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today, I want to take a step to start a relationship with you. I know I've made mistakes. I know I messed up. And I'm sorry. Today, I want you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to be my leader, and to help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And for all of us watching God, that's our prayer every single day. In the hard seasons, we follow you. In the good seasons, we follow you. In the seasons when it feels like everything's going right, we follow you. And in the seasons it feels like we just can't catch a break, we follow you. So God, that's what we commit to again today, all fresh and anew. We follow you. We love you. We praise you. And all God's people say, amen. Amen. Hey, before you go, we actually got one final thing for you guys. And it's a special, special treat. Uh, This last week, uh, there was about 26 different churches that all came together. And they put together this, this special song that they were praying and they wanted to sing all together and pray over all the people on our islands and anybody checking this out all over the world. And so it's called The Blessing. I think it'll be an amazing thing for you, Um, but just allow them to sing this over you and pray over you and we'll see you guys next week.
family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your 